Hi everybody, it is your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are continuing topic 6.4 on translation by discussing viruses. Yeah, really, really relevant in today's world, am I right? Uh, but the reason we're talking about viruses is because they are a very, very interesting and remarkable case uh, when we're talking about the central dogma of molecular biology. That fact that we know that, you know, DNA is able to replicate itself and then DNA is converted into messenger RNA, it's transcribed, and then that transcription of mRNA is translated into a code that is used by ribosomes in order to make polypeptide chains and make proteins, right? Um, so viruses are kind of able to do that, but not really able to do that. And uh, the implications of that are really, really far-reaching, as we can tell from today's world. Um, so... We're going to talk about a little bit about viruses today and possibly an exception to the rule when it comes to cent the central dogma of molecular biology, DNA to RNA to proteins. Okay, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit, we won't get into too much detail, but we'll talk a little bit about how viruses work and then how retroviruses work because they're really a remarkable exception uh, when it comes to, you know, biology. All right, so uh, a virus, by definition, is an infectious particle, can't even call it a cell, consisting of only, only of genes packaged in a protein coat. And there is a significant debate over whether or not they are even considered living things. Why might they not be considered living things? Well, it's because all the virus is, it's just genes, it's just DNA or an RNA in a protein capsule surrounded by what we call a viral envelope, uh, which is a type of, you can't even call it a cell membrane because it's not a cell, it's just a membrane. Um, and that's all a virus is, okay? Here's our very, very... Uh, prototypical virus over here, we have a, you know, here's our protein capsid, and these little yellow spikes are called antigens. That's how a uh, virus is able to latch on to a host cell. Um, it's got a protein capsule, and then this membrane, and then it's just got some RNA in it, or some DNA in it. And that's it. That's all a virus is. It's not necessarily a living thing, because it can't metabolize. It doesn't have enzymes, and most of them don't have any enzymes. They don't have ribosomes. They don't have any of the stuff that a normal cell would have in order to, say, express its genes or make copies of its genes. It can't ha do any of that on its own. So what does it do? It kind of borrows or steals a host cell's molecular machinery in order to make more copies of itself, in, a, in order to make more copies of its genes is in order to make replicate its DNA, in order to transcribe it into mRNA, in order to translate that mRNA into proteins, it has to borrow or rather steal another cell's ability to do that. It has to borrow its enzymes. Okay? So as I put down here, it can't express genes by themselves. They don't have enzymes or ribosomes to make proteins, and thus they must rely on a host cell in order to express their own genes. Because that's all the virus is. It's a protein capsule with some DNA or some RNA in it. Okay, so how exactly do they work? Okay, we can talk about the viral replicative cycle. Okay, we can't even call it a life cycle because we can't even classify viruses as living things. All right, because they don't have their own molecular machinery. Uh, so viruses, what they do is they attach to a cell and they release their genetic material, usually DNA, in some cases RNA, like SARS-CoV-2 is a RNA virus. Um, but this virus here is just going to drop off. It's going to attach itself to the cell. It's going to drop off its DNA into the host. And then what it makes the host do, it makes the host start to transcribe that DNA. And it makes it start to express the genes in that, in that viral DNA. And it kind of pretends like, oh, yeah, you know, hey, hey here's this DNA. You Why don't you express this a little bit? And then guess what? The host enzymes replicate the viral genes. Okay, because, you know, they're genes that are there, um, and they're, the virus is going to pretty much make them uh, replicate the genes, and it transcribes those, that DNA, and it, makes, and it translates it so that it can make more capsid proteins. Because remember, the virus is just the proteins and the DNA. That's it. So all the cells, all the virus is doing is making the cell express, uh, express the genes to make more of the proteins and make copies of that DNA. All right, so it's going to borrow, hey, can I borrow your DNA polymerase? Hey, can I borrow your RNA polymerase? Hey, can I borrow your ribosomes? That's what that virus is saying. But it's not really asking, it's just, it's just taking them. Um, and the viral genomes and the capsid proteins assemble once they're both, they're synthesized by the cell's ribosomes and they're replicated by the cells, uh, in the cell's nuclei, okay? 
those are assembled together into new virus particles and then they split out from the cell and they exit the cell and there you go you have a bunch of new viruses that can go infect more and more and more and more cells okay so in other words a virus basically like hijacks a cell's um replication material and its transcription material and its translation material it makes the cell express the genes for the more to make more virus okay? that's how a virus works and that's how SARS-CoV-2 works um, it binds to certain cells um, within I forget the type of cell we know what it is I just can't remember it off the top of my head it binds to certain cells okay? it makes the cells express more of that express more of those genes in order to make more SARS-CoV-2 um, makes more of the genes makes more of the proteins and they assemble out and then yeah, they spread out from that host cell, okay? Um, so that is generally how viruses work, okay? Um, but some viruses, there's a special case here that I want to talk about, and it's actually, you know, very important when it comes to AP biology knowledge. Um, we have to talk about retroviruses. These are a special kind of virus. And SARS-CoV-2, while it is an RNA, RNA virus, it is not a retrovirus. Um, but some viruses have a very, very special um, enzyme that allows them to go kind of against, or the, or the exception to the rule of the central dogma of molecular biology is that DNA is converted into RNA and that RNA is used to make proteins, okay? So retroviruses can convert RNA into DNA. So they're going the opposite way as far as the, uh, the central dogma of molecular biology, okay? They're taking their RNA, their RNA viruses, they have their proteins surrounding some RNA, and they make a cell with a special enzyme produce DNA with their RNA, which is crazy. And that DNA that is produced, um, it integrates into the host genome. Okay, so it just becomes a part of that host cell's genome, and, it, and you can't get rid of it. Okay, so that's called a retrovirus. Retro meaning like backwards. Okay, so the very, very special enzyme, the very famous enzyme that is responsible for producing that DNA from RNA, from the viral RNA, it's called reverse transcriptase. All right, think about it. Think about that for a second. Reverse transcriptase. If transcription is taking RNA, or excuse me, and taking DNA and converting some of that from the template strand into mRNA, reverse transcriptase is taking RNA and converting it into DNA. Reverse transcriptase. It's an enzyme that's found in retroviruses and it converts RNA and templates into DNA. Um, and the synthesized viral DNA never leaves the host DNA and it's used to make more of the virus. Okay, so the other crazy thing about retroviruses is that not only are they able to go backwards in the central dogma of molecular biology, it's taking that DNA and making it a part of the host cell's DNA forever, which is crazy. It just integrates that little piece of DNA that was made from the cell's RNA or the virus's RNA using reverse transcriptase. It becomes a part of that host cell's genome, and it never leaves, okay? So human, Im human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, very famous, is a retrovirus. It's the most famous example of a retrovirus that there is. You have the virus that causes AIDS, autoimmune deficiency syndrome. Certain um, immune cells, helper T cells, okay, are attacked by this retrovirus. And those cells in their genome have the, uh, have the DNA to make more viral proteins and to you know, make more viral genes integrated into its DNA. That's how a retrovirus works. And that's why, you know, if once you have HIV, unfortunately, you, it's, you know, it's chronic. It stays there. All right? That's what I wanted to get across today um, as far as viruses. We can talk more about viruses in class. Believe me, we can talk a lot about that. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, this is what I wanted to get to today, how viruses... Um, how they use the central dogma of biology and how they kind of go against it as well. And they're not even living things. You can't kill them with antibiotics. You know, you have to train your body to fight against them. All right, that's it. Have a great rest of your day. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.